police barred members of a faction of the legislature not in the camp of Governor Sula Abdullahi from accessing the legislative building. The 13 members of the House were led by the factional speaker Daniel Oga Ogazi. Ogazi accused the State Police Commissioner Mayaki Baba of uh, leading 300 troops to the State Assembly to provide cover and protection for the 10 factional members to seat and carry out what he described as illegal assembly proceedings. At the sitting of the other faction of the House, the factional speaker, Balarabi Abdullahi, who is backed by the state governor, named principal officers of the legislature. He said the principal officers were chosen after due consultation with the All Progressives Congress and other stakeholders in the state. Meanwhile, Hogazi has called on the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Khali Baba, and President Bola Tinubu to intervene to ensure peace in Nasara State and that no member should come in. But today he led himself, the former speaker, and the 10 members into the House of Assembly. While he denied the 13 of us, he said that we cannot get access into the House of Assembly. And that is why we are telling the world that if we are killed in Nasarawa State today, they should hold the Commissioner of Police responsible. If there is any problem in Nasarawa State today, they should hold the Commissioner of Police responsible. He is the one that is causing problem. And we are calling on our supporters to still remain calm. We are law-abiding citizens. But if anything happens, God forbid, the Commissioner of Police should be held responsible. Well, to get a sense of where things stand in Nasara State House of Assembly, I'm joined in the studio by Daniel Oga Ogazi, a factional speaker of the Nasara State House of Assembly. Uh, good to see you and thanks for your time. Uh, that's you there warning and also asking the Inspector General of Police uh, to come uh, provide some form of protection for you and other members. But again, let's start by looking at the genesis of this. You're all members of the ruling APC, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a case of brothers fighting. Yeah. Uh, first, let me thank God Almighty for giving us this day. And let me also thank God for giving us the opportunity to be here to speak to the people of Nigeria. Um, I want to say here in clear terms that I am a member of APC and a foundation member of APC in, Nas in Nasarawa State. And um, today, what is happening is so unfortunate. I've been in the assembly since 2015. This is my third time of being in the assembly. And since 2015, I have been a principal uh, officer in the House of Assembly. And like you said, what happened? This is like brothers fighting. I want to say that the former speaker, Ibrahim Balaribe Abdullahi, is my very good friend. Very good friend. Everybody seems to be good friends yeah. of uh, Ibrahim Balaribe because yesterday on Newsnight, the governor of your state, uh, Abdullahi, also said uh, that uh, Balaribe uh, was a very good friend of his. He, he, I don't know how they became friends, but I'm telling you... I, I mean, you, uh, uh, of you, uh, that both of you were very good friends. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, that's correct. That's correct. He said so yesterday. I watched it. We are very good friends. And that uh, we are very good friends does not mean that I cannot be the Speaker of National State House of Assembly. So, my brother, the problem started when I declared my intention to contest for the speakership of the National State House of Assembly. And the reason why I declared my intention, it is because members elect, they saw my activities in the House of Assembly, and they knew that I will be, I will, I will, I will, I will make the best speaker in the Seventh Assembly. They believe in my vision. They believe in my policies. They believe in my uprightness. They believe in the way and manner I carry out my legis legislative functions and responsibility. Most of them were outside. Most of them, the new members. And what admire most of them to even contest 
was my activities in the House of Assembly. So you inspired them I to inspired come into them, politics? Yes, to come into politics. So when they came, they saw that I would make a very good leader and that they will learn fast from me. And that was the reason why I declared my intention. From the day I declared my intention, I think some people were not happy. Do you know uh, these people? I don't know because the party called us at the tail end of uh, our inauguration, that about a week before our inauguration, to ask me and other members who declared their intention to contest for speakership that they have a choice and that we should relinquish our intention for the former speaker, Ibrahim Balarebe. So I told them, no, I have the right, constitutionally provided, to contest. But again, uh, I understand you're a politician. We understand that uh, the, the party, that's what they call party supremacy. And sometimes when the party, as we've also seen in the National Assembly leadership now, the party has spoken and given a direction of where they want the leadership uh, to come from. So is that not the same in your state, Nasara state? For how long should we continue to allow the executive to determine who should become what in the legislature? This is two separate arms of government, for goodness sake. I will never go to the governor and assume the responsibility of the governor. I will never go and appoint commissioners for the governor. The governor will never allow me to do that. Or the president will never allow any senator or House of Reps member to appoint ministers for them. So how or where on earth should the president or the governor choose who becomes the head of the legislative institution? That, I think, is an abuse of the privileges they have in their offices. But uh, Daniel Ogazi, was there a contest? So did you contest this with any other person in the House? Were there other contestants? Yeah. There were two contests, uh, we were four, until about a day before uh, uh, the inauguration. We are the two, because if you are going to win, you know. If you have anybody behind you, you know. So we are, I think the two do not have anybody that is supporting them. And all of them decided to, you know, uh, align themselves with the nine where they became 11 now. It, it, doesn't it look to you that those are the true party members who have adhered to the instructions or the advice of their party, the APC, in your state? So when they looked to what APC has said, they decided not to carry on with the contest. Uh, but you, you went ahead in clear violation of uh, the advice of your party. I'm sorry, there's nothing that I'm doing that violates any section of the constitution of my party. And what I'm doing is my right as member elect. Recall that I was elected by so many people from my constituency, both in my party and outside my party. In context of an election, you may not know those that are voting for you. Yes, you're coming from a platform. And in this regard, APC. But sometimes your party could also do funny things. And you may not even get the required vote that you expect your party to deliver for you. Sometimes you get vote, solidarity vote, from other political party. So in this case, I am going to be a member of Nasarawa State House of Assembly representing Kokona East constituency in this case, I'm not going to represent APC. So I now become a member representing the people, the entire people of Kokona East. So I am not violating any law of APC. What I'm doing is constitutionally right. And I have the constitutional backing to contest for the speakership of Nasrallah State House of Assembly. So on the day, you were unopposed since the other two backed down. Yeah. 
and uh, you emerge speaker in the chamber of the state assembly? No. Uh, the other two back down, then one is still contesting. Let me give you the story. Uh, the governor sent a proclamation. But get it right. Proclamation is different from election. Though they will, the two, will, you will carry out the two the same day, but different functions. Proclamation sent by His Excellency to the clerk of the National State House of Assembly. Because at that time, there is no speaker. At that time, there are no members. So, the governor sent proclamation. The clerk received the proclamation and sent invitation letters to members to appear before him in the hallowed chambers of Nazareth State House of Assembly on the 6th of June, 2023. In this case, on Tuesday, by 10 a.m. We were there in the morning because we are also informed that the former speaker and his group are coming into the complex early in the morning. So we went there early enough because we knew that something fishy was happening. And you know politicians. And we got there before them. They also came. And we met. They were in their bus. We were also in our bus. Surprisingly, the security men barricaded the entrance of the uh, assembly. And when we asked questions, they said, it's an order from above. And we came there without a single supporter, mind you. Only 13 of us, early in the morning. And they say, it's an order from above. We said, okay. What order is that? They say, nobody will gain access into the assembly until about 9 o'clock. We waited till 9. Nothing. By 1.30, the speaker, whom the security agencies told us that together we could not gain access into the assembly, returned immediately to... Uh, the government house and then they made an arrangement by 1 30 he was led by heavy armed security men heavy armed security men in this case air force and policemen to another location to conduct the inauguration so when we got the news that they are conducting inauguration in the Ministry of Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, we had no option than to ask that we should be allowed into the House of Assembly, because that is where the, procl the proclamation said we should conduct our inauguration. So when the police insisted that we will not go in, some of us, there is a little gate, open the gate and move in. We went in, we met the police inside the entrance of the chambers, and the door was open. We opened the door, and we moved in and carried out our inauguration. In this case, we have staffs of the assembly with us. There is a level 14 officer. He's a clerk. And that is the mistake people are making. Because I was listening to the governor yesterday. For goodness sake, the governor should have made his finding properly before coming to say things that are not related to what happened in our, during our inauguration. The clerk that sworn the 13 members is a level 14 officer, an assistant director. And we are the clerk of the assembly is sick and the acting clerk is nowhere to be found. The assistant clerk take over the responsibility. The 
current acting clerk acted when he was level, level 12. So there was already a precedent set. Yes. But now let's quickly get this right. Uh, you were inaugurated in the chamber of the, the chamber. State Assembly. Yeah. And uh, those who are getting the backing of the governor were inaugurated at the local government, uh, Ministry, uh, for local uh, government. Ministry for Local Government uh, yeah. in your state. Now speak to us on, because uh, in all of this, we have uh, two people claiming to be speaker of uh, the Nasara State House of Assembly. And uh, the local standard yeah, it's one of the key things people will be asking uh, if that also makes you uh, the authentic speaker. Yeah, you, when you look at the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Section 105, Subsection 3, he said the proclamation that the governor, it, it empowers the governor to send the proclamation to the House of Assembly. And once the governor sends the proclamation, the proclamation we carry date, time, and venue. Those are very, those three uh, key things are, ve are fundamental issues that will be determined. And those were contained in that uh, uh, communication? That, they were contained in the proclamation of the governor. Time, he said 10 o'clock. Venue, he said National State House of Assembly complex. Then, uh, uh, date 6, we're there on the 6th. The, on, uh, we are there on time, we are there in the premises of National State House of Assembly, and we carry out our uh, inauguration. So, we, whatever we did is in conformity with the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So who doesn't want uh, Daniel Oga Ogazi as speaker? I don't know. I don't know, even though the governor was here and he said he has a preferred candidate, and he even said that Balarebe is more matured and uh, more responsible. That is an insult to all other members of the Nasarawa State House of Assembly. Imagine people of Nasarawa State finding 24 of us worthy to represent them in the, hall in the hallow chamber of Nasarawa State House of Assembly. And the executive governor, whom I respected so much, said we are irresponsible, that it is only one of us you're saying that this, is uh, you're saying, you're saying this in the past, uh, who you respected, uh, have you, it, it, has, uh, has, uh, it, has it lost, has it, has it, has it no, lost? No, 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 at all, yeah. not at all, yeah. not at all, not at all. I cannot sit here and make such unpleasant statement. Have you reached out to the statement. governor? I have, thank you for that question. When I was sworn in and elected as a speaker, to bring peace, to ensure that there is peace and coexistence, and to ensure that there is harmony among all of us, I moved my member straight first to the Commissioner of Police. We went to his office, informed him that we were inaugurated, and I am the, now the new Speaker of Nasrallah State House of Assembly. From his office, we moved straight to the government house, and the governor was not there. I put a call to the governor. He picked my call and said he had an emergency meeting in Abuja with the president and that when he returned, we could see. So I respect him. I don't have any problem with him, but I'm saying that there are was, certain was, things. Was there a date fixed for that meeting between you and the governor when he uh, received your call? No, there's not that when he returned, when he returned. So um, we are still waiting. If he returned, I'll move my members to him. So the, 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 devel the to developing him. story now about uh, uh, policemen barricading the State House of Assembly, uh, we saw you there asking the uh, Inspector General of Police, uh, what's the Thank situation you. at the moment? Thank you very much. You see, what happened was that the Commissioner of Police, after our sitting yesterday, you know, after the inauguration, we had a sitting yesterday, and the Commissioner of Police, we we resolved that we were going on two weeks break. And in our sitting, we also resolve unanimously that because of the aberration of law carried out, they were perpetrated by the clerk and the former speaker, that members saw it very important 
that such people should be barred from gaining access into the House of Assembly in case if we are not there. And also directed that the Commissioner of Police seal the Assembly premises. And we went and informed him. He assured us that Assembly premises will be sealed and nobody will enter. The Commissioner of Police assured us. When we left, immediately we left his office to the government house. What surprised me? The same Commissioner of Police that spoke to us assured us that he's going to carry out his functions in, a, in line with the Constitution of Nigeria. I told him, remember, sir, your allegiance is to the Constitution, not to any man. He said he knows. I said, okay, please stop interfering in our activities. He promised us he's not going to interfere. He's not going to take side. The Commissioner of Police, unfortunately, when Balarebe and his group visited, that is the former speaker, visited the assembly, tried to gain access into the assembly, the officers and men of the police that were there refused them entry. They drove straight to the office of the Commissioner of Police. And the Commissioner of Police himself brought them back and led them into... And gave them access. And gave them access into the assembly. So, hold so, on. so quickly hold, here. Hold on, let me say something. Uh, uh, and they claim that they were going to inspect things that were damaged in the assembly. And I was shocked that who damaged what? Nothing was damaged. Quickly, if we can do this in a minute. Uh, yeah. and, uh, what's your party, uh, party's position in Nasara State? And my party position is always the same with that of the governor. But what we are saying is that we are party men and that if there is any problem like this, the party should mediate. The governor should also mediate. But they've taken sight. I, I, I listened to the governor yesterday when he said, when you asked a very fantastic question, and he said, there is peace in Nasarawa State already. Because you asked the question, how is he going to resolve this so that there will be peace? He said there is already peace in Nasarawa State. My brother, there is no peace. There is no peace. There is no peace in Nasarawa State. As of today, and do you, have are, a recipe, are, you have a recipe for peace? I have. Quickly, I should have been the one that the governor should use to be a bridge that will bring the people of Nasarawa State together. The Nasarawa State that we have today is not the Nasarawa State that we used to have. The relative peace that we enjoy in the state is no longer there. The atmosphere in the state is, in the state today is tense. We are shocked. This is not what we bargained for. We are all citizens of Nasarawa State. And that state needs the governor, needs the assembly, needs the party, and all the stakeholders to come together and see what we can do to bring our people together and remove the differences, no matter the diversity, whether you're a Christian or Muslim, whether you're a Gondara or Alago or Egon, we need to understand that we are all one, brothers and sisters, brought together by God Almighty to live in that portion of land. I think it's a fine place for us to leave it. Uh, Daniel Ogao Ghazi, factional speaker of the Nasara State House of Assembly, many thanks for speaking with Thank us. Thank you very much.